Hi, my name is Charlie Coyle and I'm Program Assistant in the Student Success Center at Gordon State College. And I'm here today to share with you how to format your papers in MLA while using Word 2010. And uh, what I have here is an example of a well-formatted MLA paper. Um, and then I have an example of a not so well formatted MLA paper, one that um, a professor would be probably pretty unhappy to see, and it looks pretty difficult to read as well. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to get this paper to look like this paper. In the video description below, I'm going to put some really handy links. One of them will take you to this page, um, and here you can download the example I'm using and follow along if you'd like. And you can do that by clicking File and Download. And this box will pop up and you can say you want to save it, and then you can open it and follow along. I'm also going to post some links to some other resources that will help you format your MLA papers and create your citations easily. Okay, the first thing you might notice is that the font and font size of this paper is very difficult to read. I have it here in impact and size 14 font. MLA 7 specifies that paper should be written in either a 12 point or 11 point font and the font should be easily readable. Now that's a little vague. Um, but I found that you can never go wrong with using Times New Roman font. So I want to change all of this to size 12 Times New Roman font. So I'm going to click within the body of my paper and then I'm going to select everything I've written. And you can do that easily by holding down the control key and the A key at the same time. Just like that. And you'll notice everything is selected all the way through the bottom. Then I'm going to go up into my little font bar here on the Home tab, and I'm going to click the drop down, and I'm going to select Times New Roman. Now it's changed the font for everything I've selected to Times New Roman, and I'm going to change the size to 12. MLA 7 says that all margins should be set at 1 inch. That means that from the very borders of your pages on all sides to where your text is, there should be 1 inch of blank space. Um, if you'll notice here, this looks to be about half an inch. So I'm going to go and change the margins. And this, you can do this very easily using the Page Layout tab right up here. So I'm going to click that. And then I'm going to go to the margins options and click the drop down. And I'm going to select normal, which makes all the margins one inch on every side. And there you go. Margins are all set. Every page in your essay needs a header that features your last name and the page number. And if you'll notice, I put coil one here, which is my last name, and it is the first page. But there's nothing on the second page or the third page. And not only that, but this needs to be right up here in the right upper hand corner. So I'm just going to delete that. And then I'm going to open up my header. And you can do that by double clicking anywhere in the top portion of your Word page. So I'm going to double click here. Um, this opens up the header tab, which is, allows you to do all sorts of nifty things. But what I want to do is insert the page number. And I'm going to click this page number drop down, go to top of page, and I want plane number three because my number needs to be all the way to the right. So there. Now it's inserted the page number, and if you'll see, it automatically numbers each following page. Now I also need to include my last name, so I'm just going to type it in in a space. And that automatically updates every other header. Now you'll notice I changed the font to Times New Roman, but this has a different font right here. Just to make everything match, I'm going to highlight it, go to the Home tab, click the drop down to set things to Times New Roman and in size 12, and then you have your header.
Now, I just want to show you another interesting feature. MLA 7 says you can have headers on all the pages, um, but it also says you don't have to have a header on the first page. And in fact, some professors ask that you do not put the header on the first page. And it makes sense. It's obviously page one because it has the title. Um, and we know who it is because it has your name on page one. So if you would like to remove the header just from the first page, but have all the following pages with the headers and the correct page numbers, all you have to do is under this options section next to different first page you just click the checkbox and what that does is removes anything from page one and if you'll scroll down, scroll down you'll notice that it has page two with the correct page number and same for page three um, I'm going to leave the header up and then to close out of your header options you can click close header and footer or you can just double click anywhere underneath the header bar now I have the fonts and margins and my headers looking good, but there's still something kind of weird going on with this paper. Now for instance, my title doesn't look so centered even though it should be, and the spaces seem kind of strange. I'm going to share with you a quick tip for trying to figure out where you've gone wrong in your formatting. And that's this button right here on the Home tab. It's called the Show Hide Paragraph Mark, and if I click it, it's going to show me every invisible keystroke I made. So this keystroke means I hit the enter key. These dots mean I've hit the space bar. And you'll notice, for example, here, instead of indenting, and I'll go over this in another section, I've just hit the space bar a few times rather than just hitting the space key. Um, this is a great tip if things are looking a little strange and you can't quite figure out why. And then I'll show you how to fix these issues in the next section. Okay, so the show hide paragraph key showed me where I made some mistakes, and I'm just going to turn this off because I know what mistakes I made now. So I know I need to center this rather than using the space bar, so I'm just going to delete that, and I noticed some weird spaces here. And what has happened is, in my body paragraph, I have selected justify and what that does is align text to both the left and right margins and creates extra space in between words um, so everything fits. In MLA we don't want that we want everything aligned to the left margin. So I'm gonna select everything with control A and then click align text left. Beautiful. See how the spaces are more consistent here, even though it doesn't line up um, to the right? Then I'm going to go back and center my title by highlighting it and click the center right here. And then I'm going to do the same thing for my works cited title because I used all the spaces. See? So I'm going to delete it, highlight it, and click center. And there's a lot of options up here for your other papers. Um, you can justify it if it's not MLA, um, if you're just writing something at home. You can do the left, the right, or the center. One of the things we noticed when I did that show hide paragraph is that it didn't always use the tab key. Instead, I've used the space bar several times to indent my paragraphs. To make everything really even, I'm just going to highlight all those extra spaces and hit the tab key, which is located right above your caps lock on the keyboard. And I'm going to go ahead and do that for all the paragraphs. Nope, and in this one, I didn't indent at all. Indentation works a little different for works cited. Oh, and you'll notice I made a mistake here. Look, I put a paragraph break in the middle of my citation. So before I show you the citation hanging indents, I'm just going to fix that up using the delete key on my keyboard. So for citations in, in your works cited, and I'm going to remove that white space so we can see a little better. Um, what you need is what MLA calls a hanging indent, and that means the first line of the entry is going to be justified over to the left like it is now, but every following line is going to be indented an extra half inch. And this is a really easy thing to fix. I'm just going to hold down my cursor at the beginning and highlight all my citation entries. And then I'm going to go up to the ruler bar right here. If you don't see this on your screen right now, you can click the View tab, 
And under show, you can kind of hide or show that ruler. I like to have it out at all times just because it's a really handy tool. To make the hanging indent, you simply click the bottom half of this little hourglass symbol. And while you hold your mouse down, drag it to the half inch mark, like so. And there you have a beautifully indented works cited page. Everything in your paper needs to be double spaced. And it looks like I've done that already, but I'm going to show you how just in case you need a refresher. I'm going to go in and select all again with my Control A keys. And then using this little button right here, the line and paragraph spacing option, I'm going to click the drop down, and yes, everything is double spaced. By default, Word usually starts things out at 1.15, but I've selected two. Now there's one other setting I want to change while I have everything highlighted, and I just want to show you the difference it makes. Notice how the space between my first line and my second line is actually smaller than the space between my title and my first line or any of the entries in my first page header right here. And that's because Word by default adds extra space after each paragraph. So I'm going to highlight everything and remove the extra space by clicking the drop down and selecting remove space after paragraph. There, now everything is beautifully formatted in the bo body of our text, and all we have to worry about is this works cited. Your works cited page needs to be on the next page, the page after the end of your essay. And right here you've noticed that I have the works cited page just kind of tacked on to the very end. It's all on, it's all in one page, it's not even its own page. Um, so what I'm going to do is show you how to use the page break. So instead of these two spaces I put in, I'm going to go to the insert tab and select page break. And all that does is tells Word that anything after this last line needs to go on the following page. Um, so let's say I realize that there's a couple paragraphs that I want to add to my paper and I go in and type them. Um, even if this runs over onto page three, Word's going to automatically put my works cited page on page four. It's a really handy tool to use. All the titles in your essay, including your works cited title, needs to be centered with no extra formatting. For example, in this title, I've underlined it, which isn't so good, so I want to make sure this underline goes away. So on the Home tab, um, under Font, there are options for adding extra formatting features to your text. So I'm going to select Works Cited and click this underline again so it removes the underline. Um, now I have my title looking really good up here and you'll notice that this is in italics. It's okay to italicize anything in your title that would be italicized in the body of your work. So because The Simpsons is the title of a television show, I have italicized it and that's alright. But you don't want anything bolded or anything underlined. So my paper looks pretty good, except for this one little detail, and that's right here. If you'll notice, these quotes are straight, they're actually called straight quotes, and these quotes are curved, they're called curved quotes. Often, if you're using a citation generator, such as EasyBib, when you paste the citations into your paper, it uses straight quotes rather than the smart quotes. Um, that you use within the body when you're typing. Um, so I'm just going to go through and replace them. Straight quotes are actually used for measurements. So if you're trying to say two inches and you don't want to write out inches, that's when you use straight quotes. Not really useful for your um, works cited page. Before you turn in your paper, it's a good idea to double check that you haven't added any extra spaces after your sentence breaks. Um, in MLA, you only need to use one space behind each period rather than two or three or however many you use. You'll notice that this space looks a little bigger than this one, so that means I must have slipped a couple extra spaces in. There's a really easy way to check this, and this is using the find function um, and the replace function. So up here on my home tab, 
there's editing options right here and I'm going to click replace. And what find and replace does is you tell Word what it should look for and then it can replace what it's looking for with whatever you want. So I'm going to hit period and two spaces and click find next. So just as I thought, um, that does have two spaces and it looks like there's a couple of them in my paper. So I want to replace those with a period and one space. Um, you can click resp replace for each one individually or you can just click replace all. So it found three instances where I added an extra space. There's one more thing I want to show you before I go and that is how to format block quotes. A block quote is any quotation that is four or more lines and you actually set it off on its own. So uh, what I've done here is I've pretended my gibberish here is a quotation and I put a citation in and I'm going to format it correctly. So the first thing I'm going to do is remove that indent. You don't need to indent the first line of a block quote. In fact, you need to indent it all an extra half inch. So what I'm going to do is select my, my big quote there. And up here in the paragraph bar right here, I'm going to click increase indent. And it increases the indent by a half inch. Now, um, because it's a block quote, I actually don't need these quotation marks. So I'm going to delete them. And block quotes don't have the period on the outside of the citation like you would if you were quoting something within a paragraph. So I'm going to delete that period and put it at the end of my quote. And that's the basic way to format papers in MLA 7. Looks pretty nifty, huh? I think any professor would approve of this. Um, if you have questions um, and want to go into more detail about Word's capabilities, feel free to leave a comment b beneath the description below. As an added bonus, I've created an MLA format checklist, and basically what this does is goes over the points we talked about and provides you little check boxes so you can go through for each essay and make sure you formatted uh, according to MLA specifications. I'm going to put the link in the video description. When you open up, it up, you can download it by clicking share and then download. And I'm just going to open that up with Adobe Acrobat. And you'll notice that these check boxes you can now click um, if you want to, or you can print it out or just read over it. It's up to you. Well, that's all I've got for you today, and um, I hope to have more videos up soon.